Hi, I'm Lauren Bregitzer, an Ableton Certified Trainer and a professor at the University of Colorado, Denver. And I'm going to show you how to use Ableton Live 12's new MIDI generation tools, particularly the core generation tool, which is called Stacks. So I'm going to show you my technique and some, give you some tips on how to use it in a really quick video. So first thing I'm going to do is with the new scale awareness modes, with the scale mode, I'm going to set this to E major. And I'm just gonna make a new MIDI clip. Just double click on it, make a new MIDI clip. And I am going to grab a piano sound, just a basic piano sound, drop it on there just so I can hear the chords as they're made. Um, I probably am gonna to wanna to pick a different instrument, but we'll start with just the piano. Um, so I'm gonna to go to the MIDI generation tools tab right here. I'm gonna make sure to choose stacks. Now there could be a total of four chords. So I clicked four here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I can click no more. So I can do three, two, one. So I'm just gonna do four chords here. And you notice it's spaced these four chords on one bar. Let me just launch this here. Now this is probably gonna be a four bar, four chord situation, but what I'm gonna do to make things a little bit easier when I'm picking out the chord progression is I'm going to make this two bars long. Hit the length set to two bars. And then I'm just going to go to this uh, uh, pitch and time utilities, which is this third uh, third tab there, right in the middle. And I'm just going to hit the, with all these selected, I hit the X2. It's going to spread that over two bars. That way I can spread over four bars later, but then I don't have to hear through four whole bars to determine if I like that chord progression or not. And so if I just play it here, um, let's just go. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the scale button to fold it all into that scale. So only the notes in that E major scale are shown. And for some reason decided to make everything a B, which is not what I want. I may wanna make it an E. So I can actually just, um, you know, start with whatever chord I want. Just know that uh, I'll start with an E. Just put everything on an E since it's gonna be a um, in the key of E. I'm gonna do things in relation to E. Now, if you use the uh, arrow keys, you might run into, I don't know if it's uh, supposed to be this way or a bug, but um, a lot of times when I want to choose the, uh, this down, brought that up to an E. Um, a lot of times when I want to use the arrow keys to adjust things, select, make sure I have these all selected again. Um, if I change the type of chord it is with this um, and I click the up arrow, it winds up changing the key. So I'm going to do the up and down arrows. And it's actually changing the root note of that chord, which is not what I have selected. So I'm just gonna go back to the very bottom one again. So if you wanna change these, the quality of the chord with this uh, button here on the stacks, I am going to have to do that manually with the mouse because any arrow clicks will adjust this root note. So let's just pick out a chord and I'm, I got it playing. And I don't have any knowledge of music theory. I'm just gonna play with some stuff. Yeah, I'll start with a C sharp. Yeah, I like it. Let's see if I can do something different with that second chord. So I'm gonna select that second chord. And then I'm gonna go and just mess around. So that one's probably okay. That one's okay. Um, let me adjust this third one here. Not bad, but uh, maybe I can want to do a <coughs> something a little bit different. probably sound good in a four bar um four chord situation rather than the two bars that we have here so now i'm going to adjust the quality of that chord if i want to see what i'm actually doing if i click a thing if i look at the four, very bottom left hand corner of the screen i can see that it's a c sharp minor chord 
if I click the up arrow, I can't click any very anywhere on the bottom, so I can click the up arrow. I get a C sharp minor sharp five. I got a C sharp minor seven. I got a C sharp minor add nine. Oh, I like that nine. Let me see if I can do something for that second one. So this will add more color to that same chord. So it'll, be, it'll still be the same co quality of chord, but it's just gonna have different extensions on there. It's still that same nine is nice. Oh, it's this third one, major. Maybe make it a major seven. If I click it once, twice, I get a major seven. And then, or I was actually dominant seven for those following with the music theory knowledge. And then this last one, I'm gonna make, it's a major chord, it'll make that a major seven. All right, now let's make this four bar. So with all this selected, again, I'm gonna jump over to my MIDI pitch and time utilities and hit that X2 button. And I gotta make sure to change the length, either manually or typing in four. And I got four chords there. So perhaps I wanna change the inversions. And what the inversions do is it takes the root note and moves it up an octave. And then it might be, if I do another inversion, it's gonna do the note on the bottom again and move it up an octave. So you can kind of change the way these chords lead into each other. Cause you see this first chord here, second chord, these are all kind of like jumpy or jump around. I want to smoothly flow from one chord to another. So I could do that by adjusting this inversion here. So if I click on say this first chord and I'm like, okay, what can I do to adjust that? And click the inversion, click up, up arrow that move that bottom note up an octave. Let's hit that next one. And again, so I get, I get three chord, three inversions because it's a, um, a ninth chord. So I like that, I like that, how that first chord leads into it. But before I do all this inversion stuff, I'm gonna make sure to copy this down. I'll explain why here in a second. So I'm gonna work from the second, this copy of it. All right, let's go back to that first chord and let's do an inversion of it. Let's try just a first inversion of that second chord. So the third chord may might, might be a little low, but uh, we'll see what happens when I just invert it all the way. Oh, the third inversion, let's hear how that sounds. Yeah, let's do maybe one inversion on that last chord. <laughs> and there you have it. You have a straight up four bar chord progression with the inversion ch adjusted. Um, and it sounds great. Um, what I'm going to do now, just a little bit, is, is I'm going to go to the MIDI transformation tools, which is this second from the right, the one before it. I'm going to choose strum. So a lot of times you know, a piano player may, you know, strum up the notes. And so I can do that with the strum tool here, like a guitar or a piano player. I can adjust that strum there. And you can actually move the beginning earlier, but I don't like to do that because it doesn't loop very well when I do that. So make sure the low part is at the center. And you can adjust the curve of it too, if you'd like. I'll do another video showing more MIDI transformation tools, but to explain why I did made a copy of it from the original one, I'm gonna drag this over to the second track here. I'm just gonna mute, I'm gonna keep it in that original version. I'm just gonna turn off 
the top three notes of each, and I can use this now as a baseline. So I can actually select all, hit the shift down arrow key, bring it down an octave, and just find a bass sound. Let me go to sounds, bass, or whatever that is, and let's hear it in there. I can also take that and add it to an arpeggiator or something else like that. So I like to keep the original um, uninverted chord and then have one for just like the chords that I'm listening to. So that way I can copy it onto different tracks for different things. So that's my use of the MIDI generation with Stacks tool in Ableton Live. So hopefully this helps and keep on making music.